Hi there. So let's move to lecture five. So here we're going to talk about unsteady and steady simulations, but also unsteady and steady solvers, okay? And also unsteady and steady physics. So basically nearly all flows in nature and industrial application are unsteady, okay? Also known as transient or time dependent. That unsteadiness can be due to many factors here. You have a short list, but usually they're unsteady. So uh, to run to run on steady simulations in open for what we need to do is just select the time step okay the time step must show in such a way that it resolves the time dependent features and maintains solver st stability related to the CFL number okay remember so you need to select also the temporal uh, discretization scheme set your tolerances for the linear solvers, monitor your CFL number, monitor stability and boundedness of the solution. Remember this min and max monitors that I like to put. Okay, so you can monitor sounds like this. Then also monitor our quantity C interest like forces or mass flow and so on. So what we study in, in post-processing. And also you need to save the solution with a given frequency because later it's likely that you want to see an animation or whatever. So you need to save that the, the solution, okay? So this will save a lot of data. So you have to be ready now to deal with that. And the final question, end of time, end time of simulation is up to you. You can run one second, two seconds, 10 seconds, 100 seconds, it's up to you. You need to monitor your simulation and see when you consider that is <clears throat> that is a good point to stop your simulation. Okay, you control everything in the classical dictionaries, control D, SB skin, SB solutions. Okay, so all the unsteady simulation in open for you do it using the PISO and PIMPO solvers. Okay, using the pressure velocity coupling. So, in particular, in SB skins, here you set out your time discretization. So, remember that you have many methods available. This one that we show here is a back is backwards second order accurate, but also you can use first order first order accurate. If you keep your CFL number be below five, you're going to maintain uh, good accuracy. And to set up the times that you do it in control did. Okay, so here delta t is where you set up that. The end time of your simulation you set up here, and this is up to you. This is no, nothing written that you have to run for one second or a thousand seconds. It is up to you. You give your saving frequency right in interval, and then you have these options here that to control also the, the CFL number, okay, when you are using you know, the the pimple uh, pressure velocity coupling. So that is how you control in uh, your time step of the simulation control date. Then we go to SB solution where you set up solver tolerances, but also you control the loop, okay, the pressure velocity coupling. Okay, so remember that we studied that this in the pre previous lecture. And here you, you depend on, <clears throat> depending on your physics or if you want better approximations, you can change this one. And even in, the, in your mesh, you can increase this one. So here probably these are for most cases where there is a physics, uh, a physics of no particular interest. Okay, it's not a severe physics. It's low Reynolds numbers. It's probably most of the cases the, 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 on the, in those situations, but sorry, the, this combination will work fine. But if you start to have severe physics, maybe it's better to increase this one to two. Also, according to the mesh quality, you should increase these values. So the idea of choosing the time step now is this one, that you should choose a time step, pick a time step in such a way that it resolves uh, the physics involved. So look at that. Imagine that here the blue line represents your analytical solution. So see in this case that you have this time step and you are missing some physics. Instead, you reduce your time step and you start to resolve better the physics, okay? So this is very important, okay? Remember that your solvers are implicit, so in theory you can use any time step, any CFL number, but if you use a, a time step too large, you can miss it, the whole physics, and basically you are not resolving not that on a steady. So for instance, you choose a time step that goes from here to here, you are missing completely that instability, that oscillations, okay? So this is very important, okay? And usually you solve your physics when you get uh, a CFL of one, you you are sure that you are capturing you now those those small fluctuations or instabilities if you have it. Okay, you are capturing the instability. So see, for instance, this is the case. This is the output that you, we get for the cylinder case. Now to go back to week one, the cylinder case or week two. So see that in this case, for instance, you choose a time step of one seconds. 
you are going to miss everything, okay? So this is the idea of choosing the, the, the right time step, okay? To maintain accuracy and stability, but also you need to monitor a quantity of interest. So this is here where monitoring forces coefficients and see that for instance, you run the simulation, you have a, a long transient, and then you have the onset of the, of the instability and you let it run. So this is the point that when should I stop my simulation? It's clear that if you stop at 100 seconds, you are not getting the right solution because you didn't unset the instability. Then in 350, it is okay. You see that you have a periodic behavior, but maybe it's too much. Probably it's better to stop at 300, okay? So you reduce your computing time and you can compute your average between 250 and 300. That is an idea that in many ways, probably you are curious about this behavior and you say, okay, let me r run up to 1000 to see if there is another instability. If I see another behavior, it is up to you. But as you see, transient simulations, there is no predefined end time. It is up to you, the user, to, to stop the simulation. And to do that, you need to monitor some questions quantity of, of interest. Uh, so now let's talk about steady simulations, okay? So first of all, steady simulations are a big simplification of reality. It's not physically realistic. In nature, honestly, I, 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 I <clears throat> it doesn't come to my mind any, uh, just a few, a few examples of, on, of steady behavior, stuff like moving very slow, like lava flow and stuff like that. But most all the things that you're going to, to see in nature or in industrial applications are fully unsteady, okay? So this is a big simplification, okay? So this is a trick that we use in CFD to get fast outcomes with results that are very questionable. You have to be very careful. So you see steady simulations, it is a model in reality. We're adding a model and those results can be very questionable, okay? So the assumptions that we take in steady simulations are two. First, we ignore unsteady fluctuation. You see that this is really bad because in reality, most of the time you have that. So when you neglect that, you are just erasing, dropping that time derivative in your governing equations. And also we perform time averaging when dealing with stationary turbulence. And then this is another huge simplification. Now, stationary turbulence. Social scene doesn't exist. In reality, we know that turbulence is a very random phenomenon, okay? But we make this assumption, okay, that under certain conditions, it, it is a good approximation, okay? But these are two big assumptions. So the bigger advantage of uh, steady simulation is that they require low computational resources. They give really fast outcomes when you choose the right parameters, by the way, and are easier to post-process because you just need to get the steady solution delayed the last time, okay? So to do so, you need to use the appropriate solver, okay? Because not all solvers, all the pressure velocity couplings are, are ideal to, to, to use with steady simulations, okay? So as you are not solving the time de derivative, you need to set the time step, just the iteration, okay? You need to tell the, the open phone how many traces you want to run. Also, you, you can also set the residual controls. We study this. You have this action and this residual control, the simulation will stop when the initial residuals are, <coughs> are the same as the final residuals, okay? Uh, so if you don't set this residual controls, open phone will, will, will iterate until reaching the maximum number of iterations or end time, okay? So you set out everything as user control did, SB skin, SB solutions, okay? And you need to use the right solvers. So those are the simple, simple C. Also set out your traditional function objects uh, and that's all. So to control the iterative margin, because in, on a steady we saw that we have time, so it's relatively easy. There you have your iterative margin. But on a steady, in a steady simulations, you don't have time. So somehow you need to iterate. So that is done using under relaxation. So under relaxation is something like this. No? So you control the chance of variables like this, okay? And that, then you add this, this, <clears throat> this coefficient here, which is the under relaxation factor. And this is how you march 
in an iterative way, no steady solutions. So on the relaxation factors, you apply to all the variables that you are solving, okay? And this on, on, the, the, on, the, on the relaxation factor are very problem de dependent. So here I'm showing you, uh, we studied this already as well, but these are the common industrial values, but not necessarily for all cases, these values are okay. Most of the time you need to use smaller values, okay, to get <clears throat> a good solution. So these relaxation factors are on the relaxation factors. They are bounded between zero and one. Okay. So as you go closer to one, you iterate faster. Okay. If you are closer to zero, it's slower. Okay. But closer to zero, you get more stability. Closer to one, you lose stability. So it is a compromise. Okay. So as you put it to one, it's very fast, but you are losing a lot of stability. So using on the relaxation of one is not recommended. It's better to use lower values. So this not values is probably dependent as I already say, but most of the time you can get your way around with these values, but sometimes you will need to reduce. So there are two ways of under relaxation, by the way, you have implicit and explicit on the relaxation. Okay. So the implicit one is <clears throat> equation in open phone. Okay. And the explicit one is fields in open phone. And they are like this, they are different. So you hear you under relax the whole equation. Here, just you under relax the field. Okay, so I like you can relate the under relaxation to the CFL using this relation. So you see that a small, <clears throat> very small, uh, a small under relaxation is a small CFL number. So you see that, okay very slow but more stability and large on the relaxation means large cfl number okay so your velocity is, is faster but you lose stability so the sense that you need to set up in steady simulations in sv skin here you need to define a steady state then in the discretization of the divergence schemes you have the option to put this keyword bounded, no? So this is just in he helps in linearizing all your equations when you are using steady simulations, okay? So this is not compulsory, but it's recommended, okay? So you can do your own benchmarking. So if you have seen some tutorials and you see this keyword bounded here and divergence, it's related to the steady simulations and, and some specific terms just to avoid the accumulation of, of too much error, okay? So remember that this is a, a huge model, no steady state, so you need to keep to reduce those errors. So when it comes to control date, you control now the end time here, you put end time and 10,000 iterations, okay? And usually you put delta T1, okay? You can put any value, but this will represent just the iteration number. Does not have any, <clears throat> any link to the actual time because we don't have any time. Uh, same for the uh, for FB solution and for a steady, you set your tolerances and then here you control your loop. Okay, so remember that you have the simple here and you have the option to use the consistent formulation that I always recommend you to use the consistent. And you have also this option to set up residual control. Okay, so if this receive if the initial residual reach this. <clears throat> You find a tolerance, it will stop, okay? And um, finally, at the end, you have the relaxation factors, okay? So this is how you, how do you control, how you control the iterative margin in a steady simulation. So here, these are the industrial values. Remember, by no means, these are the values that you are going to use to all your simulations, okay? Uh, <clears throat> just to remind you again, the consistent formulation that this is the one I recommend you always to use. And these are the recommended values. Okay. So the following on, on the relaxation are recommended for simple C, put it like this, 0, 07. These are the turbulence variables. And for simple 0, 03, 0, 07. And then for the turbulence variables, 0, 0.6. So these are the recommended in our experience. But remember that sometime, from time to time, maybe you need to reduce it a little bit. So let's compare here steady simulation versus unsteady simulation because a lot of people get confused here. So see that this is the unsteady simulation, not the quantity of interest. So this is an unsteady physics. And see that you can use a steady solver in on a steady physics. There is no problem. So you have to be very careful that you need to use the right solver for the right physics. Okay, because look at what happens. You use an steady solver in an unsteady physics you are resolver, you are getting a solution, but see that you are computing the wrong values. Okay, so it is a very fast convergence. So let's say probably in a thousand iterations, you stop, but the solution is wrong. Instead, when you have a truly unsteady physics, be careful that you need to solve, you need to use an unsteady 
problem. And here we have a steady solution or the actual steady physics and see what happens. Steady solver and on a steady solver, both of them are going to converge to the same solution, but likely that the steady will be much faster. Okay, so be be really careful about this because you can use a steady solver with on a steady physics, okay, but you are going to get the wrong solution. And to explain that better, there you are going to have a supplement with your slide, supplement six. And just to, to clarify that, so we go back to this cylinder case, okay? So we know that if a low Reynolds number, you have an steady behavior, large Reynolds number, you're going to have an steady behavior. So let's see what we get using a steady and on steady solvers in all this physics. So first, Reynolds 200, see that here, it is a truly on a steady physics, okay, something like this. And see that this is on a steady solver. Let's say that we're using piece of phone and see that you are resolving time. But see here that you have is on a steady physics, but you are using a steady solver. So see that you get a solution and even you get some, some sh uh, vortex shading there, but this is wrong. You are not capturing your time, okay? So be careful that with an steady solver, you can solve on a, on a steady problem, but what you have there, it is wrong. So always think about the, what you are doing because on a steady, a steady solvers, you can see those as, as, as models. So is your actual physics, okay? It is on a steady, it is strongly recommended to go for an on a steady solver. However, it is up to you, you can go for a, a steady solver, but the results are very, very questionable. So now if we look at the residuals, and let me talk a little bit, uh, uh, introduce residuals. See that these are on a steady solver residuals. Here we have time and iteration. So see that your residuals and you have different iterations. So you see this iteration represents to the corrections that you were adding in the, in the piece of loop. Remember outer correctors on everything. So you have all this correction reflected here. So see that your solver will always reach the final residual and you have your initial residual. So initial residual to start to iterate and now we'll reach the final residual. Okay, but see that they don't, these initial residuals, they don't reach the final residual. This is just indication that this is on a steady physics. You are going to see a similar behavior with an steady solver. So here we're comparing, comparing on a steady, a steady, and using iteration because we don't have time here. So comparing with iteration and see that you have exactly the same behavior. At the beginning, it sees that it is steady, but then on set of instability and see that your residuals stay high. The value, st this, the, the value stay, stay, remains a high value here, okay? But you always reach your final residuals. But when you see this in an a steady solver, this is immediately telling you that, look at that, this solution, it is on a steady, very changed to an on a steady solver. However, in the on a steady solver, also you are not going to see the initial residual going down to the final residuals, okay? So as you monitor the quantity of interest, see that this is what you have, okay? So on a steady, and here on a steady, a steady. And see that the steady solver is highly under predicting, in this case, drag coefficient. So you are getting a solution, but this solution is not right. So this is the case that you are converging to the wrong solution. And also you are not able to compute frequencies because you don't have time in the steady solution. Now let's move to the steady physics, low Reynolds number, and using a on a steady and a steady solver. So in this case, both solvers will give you the, the right solution. However, the steady solver will converge much faster. And instead, this one, the on a steady, you need to solve the whole transient and everything. So if in this case, you are not interested in that transient, just go for it in a steady and really fast, like probably in 150 iterations, you get that solution, okay? So see, remember, a steady on a steady solver, those are models, okay? So it is up to you to pick up the right solver for the right physics, okay? But my advice is, if your physics is truly on a steady, you need to use an on a steady solver. Do not use a steady solver because it's likely that you are not going to get the right solution. But also you can use it to get initial conditions and then you switch to an on a steady solver. And here we control the residuals and see the behavior here that now you see that the initial residuals, they are going down in a monotonic way up to the final residual. So when you see this behavior in your residuals, this is a clear indication of 
and a steady solu a steady physics okay that your solution it is steady but you don't see this very often okay and here we compare this is the on a steady solver a steady solver and see that the steady solver convert yeah, reach 10 to the minus 6 like in let's say in something about 900 iterations this one reach 10 to the minus 6 Oof, it does it get a stall okay so see that this is the, the advantage but let's say that for us usually it's 10 to the minus 4 is a good value you know, when your residuals reach 10 to the minus 4 so see that in about 700 iterations and here 10 to the minus 4 is about twice as much like in 1500 iterations so this is the advantage of a steady solver you can reach a converged solution much much faster okay but you will see this behavior in the residuals only if your physics is truly steady that doesn't happen very often okay and then as you monitor the quantity of interest see that here clearly you have you can see the difference so the blue one represents the steady and then the other one the cyan okay represent the unsteady and see that the this one in about 500 iterations already it flattened out meaning that is not oscillating anymore so you can stop your simulation here and see that this one you need to let it run for longer times to see if there are no more oscillations and here also in this second quantity of interest we have another behavior but see that in about here the blue one the cyan one see that is flattened and then the other one is still oscillating so you need to let it run longer times to see if your solution is already is not changing anymore okay so i hope i clarify you know this different with this is like the difference between a steady so it, it is important you have a steady and on a steady solvers but remember that you also have on a steady physics and a steady physics so you need to use re the right solver with the right physics okay so you can use a steady solver with the both physics but it's recommended to stick to a steady solver with a steady physics on a steady solvers with on a steady physics okay but it is up to you so this is all for this for this lecture thank you very much for your attention see you in the next videos bye